WFIU, Bloomington, Indiana, where you don't need to be an expert if you learn something new every day. When Ernie retreated into himself to write, Jerry stayed alert and ready to help at any moment. She passed the time by keeping her nose in the latest novel, or playing a double crostics puzzle, or simply browsing the dictionary she toted around like a King James Bible, waiting to use it. Now, old Ernie, I think he knew what she wanted, but he had to get the work done. Talking about the work while the work was being done gets a fella nowhere, you know. But he also knew if he didn't engage her creativity soon, it could set into motion a prolonged melancholy, which she was prone to, which in turn would pull him into a quicksand of his own. Things kind of hung in the balance here. This was their formula, if you will. And when Ernie saw melancholy coming, he saw it in everything. Keep an ear out for it. Hello, this is Ernie Pyle, the Hoosier Vagabond, and this is that girl who rides with me. Shh, I'm sleeping. Welcome to the Ernie Pyle Experiment, Episode 2, That Long Sad Wind. Listen to this wind. Shady rest of maple trees. It's two or so miles away from a folks' place, Dana, Indiana. You want one of these eggs? What's that? Do you want another egg? There's two left, but we ran out of salt. No, thank you. Where's my typewriter? I just got an idea. What's your idea? Well, let me punch it out and I'll read it to you. Here, eat this. I don't want it. I'll stick it up your nose if you don't. I can't do it without salt. Can't find the salt. No. Well, typewriter? in the trunk. Oh, here's the salt. Want another egg? No, I found the salt. Shouldn't have so much salt anyway. Can't be good for you. It should get an egg down a lot easier, though. Ah. What the heck? I'll die young. Old age is just a capricious notion anyway, isn't it? What is that word? Huh? Capricious? Yes, capricious. A swift, abrupt, unmotivated, unpredictable condition. Change, transformation. And I'm right about that. Don't make me look it up. Wind. I kind of like it. It's warm out. But it cools. I think your sweat's gonna drown you and then it's gone. I think this wind has a touch of caprice, don't you? I think this wind does have it and then some, but it makes me melancholy. Capricious seems like a happy word. Why can't melancholy be happy? Well, I wish it was, but it's yeah, not. Yeah, I know the definition, you knucklehead. I'm just saying I can't tell the difference. Hey, who's that? Ernie? That Ernie Pyle? Who is that? Bobby Webster? Ernie Pyle? Bobby Webster? You old so-and-so! How are you then? I am fine. How are you? Fine, fine, fine. What are you doing out here? Well, we just driven a few hundred miles and we thought we'd take a nap before all the excitement. Dad and mother always make sure everything gets talked about before anybody gets All your sleep, folks have so been talking to everyone that'll oh, listen that you're on your way home. Well, would you look at this guy? Honey, this is Bobby Webster. Mm -hmm. He was... What, you were seven or eight years old I saw you last. Don't about that yet. And how old are you now? <laughs> now I'm 22. 22? Oh. Holy jeez. Did you hear that, <laughs> Jerry? Holy jeez. Nice to meet you, Bobby. Oh, oh, oh. We sure are proud of you around here, Ernie. Oh. You certainly made a name for yourself. Well, okay. Say, what have you been doing with yourself? <sighs> well, I'm running the place now. Oh, good for you. Now, what do you got in the ground right now, then? Uh, soybeans and sorghum? Just corn. Just corn, huh? Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of that. I thought this time of year it was for... Well, I don't know. Well, well, how's the weather been, then? It's dry and getting hotter. This wind just don't seem to stop. When it, when it gets like this, it just tends to dry things down a bit. We need humidity right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather the weather glass be on the low side. We mm -hmm. need that moisture. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's a sad wind, ain't it? It's a long sad wind. Yeah, it, it sure is. Beautiful, though. It sure is. A long, sad wind. Care for a nip of some sweet and old and all things good and necessary? What you got? A little bit of granddaddy's cherry pie. Well, it's oh. in the truck. Let me go get it, huh? Ooh, what's that? Granddad's what now? <laughs> That's the best homemade you never have. That's a daring statement. Hey, how is your grandpa, Bob? Uh, he's dead. But he left us this recipe to remember him by. And so the lesson was doled out once again, that if you drink too much, you get drunk. And if you get drunk, at some point, you're going to want to sleep. And if you get drunk enough, any old place will do. Except your folks' house. Don't go there. Four thirty a.m. <clears throat> Granddad's cherry pie knocked our teeth out. <laughs> Drank it all up. Jerry's still sleeping in the car. I figured we ought to sleep it all off before coming to mom and dad's, but I can't. So drove up here, out front of the old pile place. Figured I'd try and do some composing until the lights go on. So let's see. There's nobody here to judge my work habits. I get to make this job up as I go. Mostly it has to do with sitting and thinking. Better than farm work. Let's see. This wind. Yeah. What is it? I guess this is where I first thought about such things, though. What is it? On its own merit, for words and science, wind can only be felt, not ever understood. Can it be gotten to the bottom of? Hmm. All the time spent here beneath these trees as a boy, what comes to mind is I feel heartbroken. This wind is melancholy, unending. All oh, this restlessness I feel right here in this place. Never knew what it was when I was a boy, you know. If you asked me then, I'd have shrugged my skinny shoulders and gone fishing. Oh, someone's up. Light in the kitchen just went on. Now I feel like I gotta go in. You don't want to stay here outside. and need to sit with the folks and drive as fast as I can to parts unknown all at the same time. Whoo! Why is that? I haven't the words. I shrug my skinny shoulders and wonder if the fish are biting. noise for Mom! Shh! She's sleeping! Well, she shouldn't be sleeping out in the yard in the first place! She's in the car! Kids these days! Come here, young lady. Give your boy a hug. Oh, you're as skinny as a three-legged lamb! <laughs> Look at you! <laughs> Why is a three-legged lamb skinny? Well, can't stand at the teat. <laughs> Well, I like teats, all right. I suppose I'm just not trying. What's she feeding you? The hard-boiled eggs, mostly. She hates doing it, but I guess I wouldn't eat a damn thing if she didn't. Settle down here in Dana, and we'll get her up to snuff in the kitchen. Well, you might be a bit overconfident there. Just come back where you belong. We can figure something out. <laughs> Is Dad awake? He's getting ready to go to work. Doing what? Wallpaper in the Yoder's sitting room. He doesn't have enough to do around here, then? Oh, it never ends. As soon as you get the north of the house painted, it starts peeling on the uh -huh. south. Work. I suppose you know nothing about it. Oh, sure. Never ends, I'll tell you. Like the infinite flow of Old Man River. That's true. So why isn't the old timer painting the house here, then? You gotta get the money when the money's there to get got. Until then, we shall be the cobbler without shoes. <laughs> Come on in and get some breakfast, and get her up and out of that back seat. Will do, Mother. Come on now. If you think I'm spending a moment without you while you're here, well, you're wrong. Boy, I already want to get the hell out of here. 
So Ernie threw the recorder in the car and went inside. And what came of it is the start of Jerry using it as a diary of sorts. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is when we meet for the very first time Jerry's good old boyfriend, Jim. Stay with me now. to these wires, I'll be in trouble. He might even think I have a boyfriend. Maybe he should think that. I'm gonna call you Jim. My boyfriend, Jim. <laughs> it's nice to talk to someone sometimes. Tell you, Jim. I don't know about you, but when I get a chance, I'm gonna go for a long walk and I am staying out past dark. It's a little place I like to go to with a tracks in town secret <laughs> uh, it's from the Volstead years the police acted like it was not even there well when they were in uniform anyway I swear Jimmy boy I would take you but you are fat and <laughs> if you got too drunk I could not carry you home. Oh, ah, just a second. Hiya, Pop. Good morning. Good morning. There's a comfy bed waiting for you oh, inside. Oh, I know. Thank you. It's comfy. You get a crick in your neck, and then where would you be? Well, I guess I'd be out here with a crick in my neck, I suppose. It's comfy. Okay. There's coffee. What are you drinking? I'm surprised you're out here with me letting it get cold. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I had to get away from all that yakking going oh, on inside there. already? Oh, Lord, yes. I can't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> the second one stops to breathe, the other starts right in. you got to speed your in. timing up. Well, why? It gets me so riled up, I have to drink more <laughs> coffee to give myself something to do. Well, I don't know what to tell you then. I don't either. How long you planning on staying? Oh, I'm not sure. Ernie is behind now. He usually likes to have a three-week cushion. What the heck kind of couch you put a three-week cushion on? <laughs> That's what we call the gap between the here and now and then whatever backstock his editor carries in his column. We'd like that cushion to be around the three-week mark. Uh, sure, I get you. Well, he could stuff that cushion from right here, you know. <laughs> we'll stay out of your way. I know. He could take some time off anyway. Well, a thousand words a day, six days a week. You know, gotta get that hay in the barn. Don't I know it. I want to stay myself, play catch up with you and Mom. You know, I love the fresh air, the good food, so you have me convinced. But he's the one with the car keys. Well, would you look at that. What? Your tires are all flat. No, they're... What? No, they're not. Not now. Tomorrow. When you try oh, and leave Dad, here too Dad, you early. wouldn't. Oh, I never. I would never. I'll be in in a bit. Comfy bed, comfy, <laughs> cozy. Hey, there he is. She's still sleeping? She's awake. Oh, no. you think I'm a freeloader, lazy I, freeloader. I don't think I know. <laughs> well, I don't think you know either. Don't worry. I know who the real freeloader is around oh, here. Oh, who, me? Let's just say, yes. since I don't rest, I know who it ain't. Well, I don't rest either. The heck you don't. Now, wait a minute. When your Ernest was about six years old, oh, here he go. comes to me and tells me he's taking a half hour for rest before going back to the fields after that. lunch. I told him if he sets that long after he eats, he won't want to get back up. He says he will, and that he'll work harder if he rests. I knew that was hogwash, and I was getting angry. 
so I just let him try it out. I figured he'd stay sleepy after and not get his chores mm-hmm. finished. Then I'd have to get after him about it. Mm-hmm. Well, he went right over there and lay down under the shade trees. Yep. Fell asleep. Then I got oh, up and finished my chores. Did then he? he got up and finished his chores. Then I got to thinking maybe I should nap too. Maybe it'd be good for yeah. me too. <laughs> yeah. Keep my pep up late today. Well, I fell asleep for three hours. Missed the milking because we had a lazy cow that oh. if I wasn't on time... Would lay back down and not get up until morning. <laughs> she lay there in the mud all night, then stayed there the next. No. Something went south. She got hard back and she was gone. Oh. I've made more mistakes, you know. Should have been a race car driver. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> anyway, now I stay awake, <laughs> just drink more coffee. And you're going to live longer than me because of it. Because I nap. Well, what else am I talking about? Well, maybe it's the coffee. Now, don't tell me to quit the coffee. Then maybe you should take more naps. Mm. I just got through telling you what a nap could get well, me. Well, drink more coffee then. <laughs> it's your life. So you care. want me dead? Uh, I want no such thing. Where would you get the I idea? I got that... a feel. Well, yeah. get a fact, would you? <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, okay. Maybe I will. Anyway, I'm old. Maybe it's a bad job, me trying to make you see something that only I can ever feel. Oh, the wind in these trees, boy, I tell you. You remember that, don't you? I sure do, Dad. I'm getting sad. Come get some coffee. Now, I got a new percolator. It's good, but I have to leave the stove on, and I can't walk out the kitchen without worrying. Come get some coffee. I got a new percolator. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been a race car driver. <laughs> I know. It's great. <laughs> oh, boy. You think so? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at him walk. Oh, he's determined. <laughs> he just leans forward, looks like he's about to hit the ground, and puts his foot out. <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, let's not get old, shall we? No. I need to write. Yeah. Yep, let's get that coffee. No, I'm gonna... Go take a walk. And she was gone all day. Poor old Ernie. He had a deadline with a live one on the other end. If one ever affected the other, it's in the ear of the beholder. So, behold this, my friend. Later that night in Ernie's bedroom. Close that window. Shh. Do you want to hear this? I'm sleeping. You're drunk. You're jealous. Okay, then here goes. I don't know whether you know that long, sad wind that blows so steadily across the thousands of miles of Midwest flatlands in the summertime. If you don't, it'll be hard for you to understand the feeling I have about it. Even if you do know it, you might not understand. To me, the summer wind in the Midwest is one of the most melancholy things in all life. It comes from so far and blows so gently and yet so relentlessly. It rustles the leaves on the branches of the maple trees in a sort of symphony of sadness. And it doesn't pass on and leave them still. It just keeps coming, like the infinite flow of Old Man River. You could, and you do, wear out your lifetime on the dusty plains with that wind, the futility blown in your face. When you're worn out and gone, the wind still saying nothing, still so gentle and sad, timeless. It's still blowing across the prairies and will blow in the faces of the little men who follow you forever. One time in 1935, when I was driving across Iowa, I became conscious of the wind, and instantly I was back in character as an Indiana farm boy again. Like dreams came the memories the wind brought. I lay again on the ground, under the shade trees at noontime, with my half hour for rest before going back to fields, and the wind, and the sun, and the hot, 
country silence. It made me sleepy. And yet I couldn't sleep for the wind in the trees. The wind was like the afternoon ahead that would never end. And the days and the summers and even the lifetimes that would flow on forever, tiredly, patiently. Maybe it's a bad job my trying to make you see something that only I can ever feel. It is just one of those small impressions that form in a child's mind and grow and stay with him through a lifetime. Even shaping a part of his character and manner of thinking and he can never explain it. Capricious. What? Couldn't work capricious in there anywhere? Oh, yeah. I, that would have worked. I forgot. Whatever am I here for? <sighs> Next time on the Ernie Pyle Experiment. She ordered me to come through. And I began to cry. She told me if I didn't stop crying and didn't come through, she would whip me. I couldn't stop, and I couldn't come through. So she came and got me, and she whipped me. Huh. Well, whose team are you on? You should have steered him here. You know how it is. He gets here, and he forgets about writing. Well, he should. Well, for a time, at least. I got ways to make him work when I need him to, you know. I can get him to write here, too. I'm the one made Ernest so ambitious. I made him hate farm work. I made him feel like the whole world would end if he didn't get the chores in. I'd threaten him with a switch. I only had to whip him a few times, though. He learned. He certainly works hard now, Mom. See you next week, folks. Until then... I'm Dan V. Prescott, reminding you that the good road will never end if you only stay on it. The Ernie Pyle Experiment is produced at WFIU on the campus of Indiana University. For complete credits of cast and crew for each episode and to find past episodes, visit WFIU.org slash Ernie Pyle Podcast. Also, find the Ernie Pyle Experiment wherever you access your media. WFIU, Bloomington, Indiana. I'm Carrie O'Nanan. Don't you forget it. <laughs> <laughs>